Good morning, you guys. Well, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever time it is when you are watching. Hello, hi, how are you? If you're new here, my name is Shanrika Tanise, but you can call me Shan. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on because YouTube be trying to play me, y'all. Honestly, if electrolysis or laser is not in the title, it will not suggest it to you. You will not see it. Uh, so turn your notifications on, see if that helps we'll see but i also like even in my vlogs i do put little mini updates of how my skin is looking in between appointments so if you're interested in that i do tuck them into my vlogs here and there if you want to see more progress of my skin over time why does everybody want to make noise right now it is seven in the morning so if you couldn't already tell by the title today i'm finally giving you guys my full timeline of my electrolysis journey and an estimate of how much money I have spent. This has been a requested video, but I really had to go back and figure out when I went to all of these appointments because I was not keeping track of them at all in the very, very beginning. Um, and I don't have like a stack of receipts that I've saved or a calendar that I've saved or anything like that. Um, so I did my best to jot down as many uh, appointments as I could find for through like phone calls and stuff like that um, and based off of my memory so I started my electrolysis journey in 2019 I hadn't really known anything about electrolysis I had a friend from high school who actually was having the same issues and I asked her about it one day when I was visiting home from college and she was like, just get electrolysis. I'm like, what is that? She's like, no, it's it's permanent. Like, get electrolysis. I'm like, oh, hmm, okay. But I didn't take it too seriously because I didn't have like a full thing of hair. Like it was, it was starting to get worse. I still had more hair than what I had before, but it was still very sporadic. I didn't have a lot. So plucking was still kind of working for me here and there. But... By February of 2019, I was in my last semester of college and I was just over it. My birthday had just passed, my 25th birthday had just passed and I was miserable. I had a terrible birth. <laughs> I had like a quarter life crisis on my 25th birthday. I, I don't know what happened. I woke up and I was so sad. But anyways, <laughs> I was over it at that point and I was like, you know what? It's time. It, it's time for me to figure out where I need to go, who I need to go to and how to get this off of my face. So I went to a place called Fabulace in Garner, North Carolina. They were very friendly, very nice, very sweet, very comforting. Um, I didn't, I really didn't have any issues, but I also didn't really know much about electrolysis in the beginning. So I did set up a consultation. I went, she told me probably about six months or so give or take it all depends on how much my hair grows so i went to her and i was doing 30 minute sessions there as well and i was paying roughly 40 45 dollars plus tip so i would say on average i was paying 50 dollars per session um and i don't have exact dates or a timeline i was going very irregularly i wasn't it wasn't like I was going every week or every two weeks or you know on a strict once a month schedule or anything like that I was just going as I felt like I needed to go which was part of the problem I would say um as for you know as far as progress being made I was I was going on my own time so there's that but I I'm fairly certain that I went about four times with roughly $50 each time. I spent about $200 there in total. April, she gave me this pamphlet because during my last appointment, I was telling her that I was going to be moving to Vegas. Um, at this point, I don't know if Ty had left already or not. He left in April. I still had to finish my last semester of school. So I was gonna follow him a couple months later. Um, I told her, that I was going to be moving to Vegas and she gave me the pamphlet from the AEA which is who she was um, accredited by or certified through and in there was only one person in Vegas at all like she was like the only person in Nevada <laughs> if I'm not mistaken 
And so I was really grateful that she gave that to me as a resource to find someone to, you know, continue where she left off. But what happened was come May, June, like after I graduated and was preparing to bring myself over here to Vegas, once I got here, I could not get in touch with this woman. Um, I pray that she is fine and that she's healthy and that she's okay, but I could not get in touch with her via her website or her phone. She just, the phone was on. It, it, I just never had an answer or a call back. Um, so hopefully everything's fine with her, but I was never able to get in touch with her. So I pretty much just felt like that was it. I'm done. I can't, like, there's nowhere for me to go. That was the only person that I could go to and she's nowhere to be found. So what do I do now? So I pretty much... This is, this is May slash June of 2019. I went basically an entire year before it just clicked and I went, the AEA might not be the only resource as far as electrologists are concerned. So maybe I should just Google. And I don't even know what made that click in my head, but it was just like, I don't know. One day I was just like, just, just Google it. Maybe there's more. <laughs> So of course I Google electrologist or electrolysis in Las Vegas and a couple places popped up. And the very first one was Electrolysis Center of Las Vegas, which was around the corner from my job. So I called them in May of 2020 and I was able to make an appointment, I believe that same week. Um, and this is right after things started opening up for the first time because remember 2020 in March everything shut down and I was laid off from my job for about two months and then around May is when actually I want to say the second week of May is when we started to open back up um, and prepare for what you know what life was going to be like with these masks on so mid to late May is when I finally got in touch with them to make an appointment with them, which was great. I felt like I was back on the right path. Um, I felt like I was back on the right path and I could continue this journey. The woman I went to, I'm not gonna name anyone. <laughs> well, I guess I did name April already, but specifically because I am still in Las Vegas and my experience at the electrolysis center of Las Vegas was not bad, but it wasn't for me. Um, and a lot of that had to do with the pandemic itself. So I don't want to, I don't want to say names and then people go there based off of what I said. And it's, you know, I don't, I don't want you to take anything off of my experience as far as how you're going to form your opinion, because I don't think it's a bad place. I think they do a good job but my experience wasn't the best based on the circumstances of everything going on around me. I went in May, that was fine. Um, and then I went again in June and the original lady that I had gone to was not there. And I ended up going to the another lady, um, which already had caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting to go to someone different I like to be as consistent as possible so there was already a level of comfort that was taken away in that sense like you're not my electrologist you're just some you're someone else's electrologist I'm just going to you because mine isn't here mine isn't available so it's like going it's like going to another doctor like can you imagine going to a doctor and then suddenly you go and like hey so-and-so is not here but I can check that out for you You'd be like who are you and why are you touching me you know it was that so I was okay I'm like I still need to do it like I can't keep letting this much time go by <laughs> boy I can't keep letting this much time go by without getting this done so I go to the other lady and this is just super painful I don't I can't fully say why I'm sure she had her settings higher which is probably a good thing um but I also, my anxiety was up really high. I had just lost one of my great grandmothers. So I had a really hard time. I didn't even think we got through like five minutes or probably not even five hairs <laughs> before I literally was like in full blown panic mode. Um, so 
so she sat me up she was like you know what maybe you should come back another time and I was like okay and then I asked her what she wanted me to pay for you know that couple of minutes and she was like don't worry about it just go you need to go <laughs> and get some rest so um she was really sweet about it and then following that appointment is when my face really really started to break out so I can insert some pictures I don't have any pictures from 2019 because I wasn't documenting anything yet um but I am going to insert some pictures of how my skin was looking when I had a really bad cystic acne breakout and that was just a stress induced anxiety induced breakout that was super painful and I wonder too if that added to the pain if it was already starting to build under my skin during that appointment then that also was a reason it was extremely painful um yeah but I don't know all I know is my face blew up so there's that and I ended up going to the dermatologist and everything in like August or something and getting that figured out and it slowly started to subside um so I did not go back there until October because that's when my skin finally started to clear up um, I didn't want to get electrolysis during this breakout because like I said my skin hurt my skin hurt really really bad so I knew that if it hurt to touch my face I definitely didn't want anyone sticking needles in it so yeah I didn't go back until October and I believe I went to the same lady again because my original electrologist was still not there um, again praying for her I think she had some family issues with COVID I'm not entirely sure but all I know is she was not available and then I do have a record that I called them in November I don't think I went in November I think I called they called me back and I was gonna make an appointment or maybe I canceled an appointment I'm not I'm not entirely sure but I'm pretty sure that I did not go in November but I did go again in December that appointment is actually the same appointment from this video and that's the first video that I posted here about my electrologist journey, my electrolysis journey. Um, so you can look at footage from that video if you haven't already seen it, but more than likely that video brought you here. So if you haven't seen it, go to that video. If you have, then you already know what I'm talking about. And that was the last time I went there. All in all, I would say I went there about four, possibly five times. And again, I was spending an average of $50 for 30 minutes. So I spent anywhere from $200 to $250 there. Like I said, if you are in the Las Vegas area, I do think it's a good place to go. I just had a lot of personal things going on that made me really anxious and really question my environment completely. Um, that in hindsight, I don't think was bad at all. I think I just my anxiety was just up and I just wasn't with the person that I chose you know I didn't choose this person they were just my only option at that point point. Um, and I think that took away a level of comfort for me but I do think that it's still a good place to go to if you are looking for a place in Las Vegas so again after that December I didn't go back there anymore I waited a while um, and I think I think at that point I really just kind of got used to shaving it with my little eyebrow razors. That was just the easiest, quickest way to get it off and go on about my day. It kind of became annoying trying to make appointments um, because again, I was basically going on my own time. I wasn't being told when I should come back or being recommended a certain time frame. I was just going when I as needed like if I looked at my skin and went okay I, I think it's time to go then I would try to make an appointment and the difficulty there was because it seemed like only one person was able to do anything after COVID um, you could no one was going to answer the phone we had to leave you had to leave a message and then um, they would call you back to schedule an appointment with you so it was becoming a hassle to try to even get an appointment in the first place because I could call one day to try to get an appointment maybe they'll call me back later that evening or the next day and the availability wouldn't be until next week because she's just one person 
around March is when I started looking again because one, I needed to continue. I couldn't just stop. I didn't really plan to stop. It just kind of happened. Um, and then around that same time is when that video actually really gained traction and was being pushed to a lot of people. When I first posted that video in December, um, it wasn't getting that many views, but come March, it was like, I, it was getting like 100 views a day, which was completely abnormal for my little tiny channel. <laughs> um, so when it started picking up, I was getting questions and I'm like, okay, I need to continue, but where do I go? So I started looking again, and that is when I found Smooth Image. And I made an appointment for April 1st. Now this is where I started to have better like exact dates of when I was going because I was really truly documenting my journey. I have text messages of my appointment dates and times as well as every time we set an appointment I would put it in my calendar. So I have exact dates for you guys from this point forward. So on April 1st was my first time going to Smooth Image and I immediately felt comfortable. I asked a lot of questions. It was a good environment. It was nice. It was small. It was comforting. Um, and then things were different. So this is the first time that I'm sitting down and I'm being handed this little wire thing with a wet paper towel around it. And I'm like, what is this? I've never gotten this before and I've had electrolysis before. So what's this thing, you know? So I was able to ask a lot of questions and I actually was only supposed to be going for a consultation that day, but he was like, let's, let's get started. I'm like, oh, okay. So I laid him on the table and I was not expecting the pain level. So the same experience I was just having a few months prior at this other place is happening again. And again, anxiety is all new to me. I did not know that anxiety and adrenaline were related. They correlate to one another. So when you, um, when your body is going through something traumatic, essentially, you're putting your body through pain, you, your adrenaline starts pumping and it puts you in like fight or flight mode and fight or flight mode also heightens your anxiety because you're like, ah, I have to get out of here because why am I sitting through pain? You know, it's not natural to, to sit through pain if something's hurting you you stop it so i was not expecting it to hurt as bad as it did and that was another appointment that i was like uh, -uh i wasn't prepared enough and my anxiety is already too high for me to sit through this so he was very understanding and he was like you know let you just come back next week so i came back exactly one week later on april 8th and he gave me numbing cream previously so I was able to just pay the five dollars for numbing cream and then come back. So April 8th I came back, I had the numbing cream and I was able to sit through a full 30 minute appointment. And I can honestly say I felt really comfortable even though the pain was higher than it had been in since 2019. I felt more confident that I was going to get the results. Like I was like okay I can feel it. He He's going to make sure these hairs don't come back um and it was funny because you know how like you know when someone's doing something very meticulous or um like if they're drawing or doing a puzzle or even like somebody like trying to pop a pimple or get like an ingrown hair out or something like that where they're like ah, I almost had it that's what he would I could hear him like being like oh that hair that damn hair <laughs> And so like I felt more confident that he was determined to get these hairs out of my face for good. So that made me feel more comfortable. So we came up with a plan after that to essentially have become pretty much weekly to get as much hair going as quickly as possible. Um, the hair wasn't growing back in a week. I know this can be confusing for some people when I say I was going weekly. Your hair growth pattern is all over all over the place your hairs are not all growing at the same rate of speed or in the same phase of your growth cycle so i can have like five hairs all in the same cycle those are present now if i pluck all those tomorrow there can be more hair and that's not the same hair that you just plucked i see a lot of people say like they waxed or they plucked and the hair was back in three or four days it's not the same hair that hair was under your skin that hair did not get plucked 
it was under your skin before you did that so now in three or four days now it's above the skin so these are not the same hairs if you're going weekly or every two weeks or something like that your hair is in a rotation it takes about four to six weeks for your hairs to grow and they are all at different parts of that four to six week hair growth period if that makes sense so we came up with a plan for me to go weekly um or as close to weekly as possible so my next appointment was april 19th standard appointment nothing special um once again on april 30th and then from there we started to push it out to closer to two weeks because just didn't need to go every week anymore so from there two weeks was pretty much the marker so i went on may 13th may 27th and then june 11th so after june 11th i didn't go back again until july 23rd now i do think i had an appointment between there now that i think about it i texted him and canceled that appointment and rescheduled it for a later date because my anxiety was pretty high um and i just already knew that because my anxiety was high, I wasn't going to be able to sit through that appointment. It's really amazing what anxiety can do to you. <laughs> um, yeah, so I didn't go back until July 23rd, which was right before we went to Hawaii for our anniversary. So that was my first time getting the laser. At that point, I was done. I was over these sideburns. I was over the hair. I was just like, I, I want it gone and I want it gone now. Um, there was that and I explained this in my last video so there was that I wanted the hair gone but I also still had some really thick hairs that were really irritating my skin they would keep creating ingrown hairs and they were so thick that they just wouldn't die and he was afraid to turn up the um, the level of electrolysis he was afraid to turn it up because he didn't want to damage my skin and it was already pretty high and it was already causing me a, a good amount of pain and he'd have to go in three or four times just to get that hair to come out and it still didn't come out that smoothly so if we go over these hairs with the laser it will weaken them and then the electrolysis will work a little better because that hair is already halfway punched in the face you know <laughs> it's halfway knocked out so that was the first time I got the double treatment of laser and electrolysis and so of course the price was a little bit more up until that point I think I was paying an average of about $50. I'm not going to tell you the exact price of what I spent on the double treatments but of course it was still cheaper than if I had two separate appointments so if I had went to an electrolysis appointment and then went to a laser appointment or vice versa and they were two separate things then I would have spent more money but because I got them done the same day at the same time within the same 30 minutes I didn't pay as much as I could have. So from that point forward, from July 23rd onward, I have pretty much done a double treatment every single time. So August 30th, and that was a full month later and we were about to go to Hawaii again. <laughs> November 3rd, that was when I had waited too long. Um, and that video is this one right here that I waited two months before going back to laser. Then November 12th, I went. This wasn't a real appointment. I was worried that the hair wasn't coming out the way that it was supposed to after the laser. But I, you know, I was worried for nothing because he took his tweezers and went boop. And he said, did you feel that? And I said, no. And all the hairs were just sliding out of my skin. They weren't attached. November 29th was mostly just a laser appointment. I had a few hairs that still needed electrolysis, but at this point i had very little hair left and then i went on december 20th which um the footage that i have of me actually getting the laser and the electrolysis i will insert them here i think i put clips of them in the last video i can't remember but i know i also have clips of them in my vlogmas travel video my vlogmas packing pack with me or packing tips video I inserted those clips at the end of that video because that was the same time frame it was probably like the very next day and I didn't want to hold out on that footage so I stuck it in that video as well but I can insert a clip here if you are sensitive to flash skip ahead about 10 10 seconds ish but yeah that was December 20th um and then I just recently went January January 20th 
and January 28th. So I went again on January 28th and that was my most recent appointment. Today is February 8th so I probably won't have to go again for a while. Um, maybe the end of the month or so. So if I add all of that up correctly I would say I spent about and this is give or take maybe 50 bucks. Probably not take 50 bucks but maybe give 50 bucks. I spent anywhere from 700 to 750 dollars. Um, in that time frame, which actually is not bad at all. When I add that up, it's it's not bad at all. So all in all, from 2019 until now, I spent anywhere from $1,100 to $1,200. I know that's kind of a gap, but it's not crazy. I spent $1,000, essentially, a little over 1000 And majority of that was when I was going regularly. I did not spend much at the other two places when I was going sporadically because each of those places I only did about four or five appointments um but yeah keep in mind that again I was every appointment I've ever had was only 30 minutes long and the frequency of me going dictated how much I actually spent because majority of 2019 I did not get electrolysis and majority of 2020 I didn't either so 2021 was really from April to I mean I guess I can count this past January as well it's the first time I had like nine months of consistent treatments I guess the main takeaways are be consistent shop around and you know find your place of comfort and budget um, I know electrolysis can cost very different amounts in different places some of you spend upwards of a hundred dollars effort every appointment or maybe even 120 maybe more than that if you're going for a full hour the price ranges significantly depending on where you are and who you go to and how long your appointments are i don't know if i look closer or further away but i literally got to the end of the video and then my camera died so yeah anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you did because i told you youtube be tripping on me they don't be pushing my videos unless it's about electrolysis or laser which this one is so i mean it'll probably do fine but like i said i do give little mini updates in my vlogs here and there um literally anytime i pick up a camera sometimes i randomly just go yeah here's what my skin looks like so if you're interested in what my skin randomly looks like on a random day Make sure you watch those videos. They might not get suggested to you. But anyways, make sure your notifications are on and you are subscribed. That will help with um, you seeing my videos when they are uploaded. Don't quote me on this, but you might get a bonus video this week of my birthday vlog. My birthday was on the 4th. I am now 28. If you said happy birthday to me on Instagram, thank you so much. You guys are so sweet. I love interacting with you guys on Instagram. I don't post my, my face every day on Instagram. I just... I don't know it feels weird to me like talking about it on youtube feels totally natural but talking about it on instagram feels very strange um maybe not not so much in my stories but like as an instagram post it feels strange that's that i'm rambling on about stuff that's completely irrelevant to this video now so i hope you guys have a wonderful day and i will see you in the next video